the end of the last episode it looked like that and the first thing to do is a light wash of uh, watered down brown acrylic on this lot unfortunately I've nearly run out of my acrylic brown so I found this in, in the garage and I think there's a little bit more than I need for that but I've got to use it anyway so that's uh, the brown on and along the river and the banks and now I'm going to get some black and while that paint's still wet I'll mix some black into it now my intention was to start putting some static grass down on this area here and here uh, and I couldn't find my uh, static grass applicator it's your standard um, electric one you know where you put the pin in and tap it so I phoned my local model shop and said have you got one in have we got an applicator in stock and they said yes we have so I went down there and I came back with this and I have never never heard of it before gauge master and inside you get a little packet of glass uh, a puffer bottle and a bottle of liquid which you paint on to the surface that you want to uh, apply the static glass to now I don't know whether the magic is in the bottle or whether the magic is in the uh, the, the, the liquid so I'm going to experiment I'm going to put some down with this and a patch down with ordinary PVA which is what I normally you would use was, we'll have a try and see what happens well, according to the instructions half fill the puffer bottle with static glass and screw on the red cap and yeah, we'll do that and then it says let's go on the red cap brush your glass glue to the area you wish to cover vigorously shake your puffer bottle remove the red cap turn the bottle upside down and rapidly pump the puffer bottle the shaking and, subs and the subsequent pumping of the puffer bottle causes an electrostatic charge which causes the glass to stand up Right, well we're going to start with uh, some of their glue and I'll just do a small patch with their glue here which right there now I'm going to wash the, the glass they wash the brush properly and now I'm going to paint now I'm going to paint some ordinary PVA glue on this side which are just here now the PVA I must admit is uh, a lot thinner because that's uh, some thin down stuff that I had before now I'm going to shake it vigorously that's vigorously isn't it and I'm going to remove the red cap and puff 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 Puff, come on, puff, 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 puff. There, and then puff, 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 puff here. That's it on the PVA, and that's it on the bottle that comes with the kit. Well, there's no doubt about it, it was certainly a little bit better with their glue but to be fair I'm going to try it again with uh, PVA not thinned and we'll see what happens then so here's a bit of PVA not thinned and we just brush that out and that's actually a little bit thicker than theirs now we do a bit more vigorous shaking and with the red cap off uh, and 
puff, 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 puff. Let's see what's happened to that. Uh, difficult to see with the camera, but um, I think the answer is that there's not a lot of difference, but I think the PVA needs letting down a little bit. Now for the bridge building. Well, this is the inner bridge, the one that uh, you're less likely to see. And I've used a mounting board, picture mounting board, for the, uh, the face. And I've pinned that now to where the track will run. That's, so that's the platform of the bridge. Uh, now I'm going to make um, the tunnels underneath and I shall then see where they come out on the back and make a similar arrangement then for the back of it. So that's, uh, that's more or less how it's going to be and then I shall paint uh, the stonework on there or something. That's in place now but it's uh, obviously not fixed or anything. I've now put these uh, pieces on here which are obviously the side walls of the passageway or the holes through the, the bridge and then I've got to put the next backing on which will be this one here I'll pin that on when this is all properly set and then mark out where I've got to cut this one I've, I've never made a curved bridge before um, and I'm learning as I go along and I've got another one to do so I'm learning with this one which shows the least and I did what I decided to do is on what I should have done with this one uh, make two of these faces identical and then because it's longer at the back longer um, then I'm just going to cut it down here, down here to make the back one and then just spread them out and put a makeup piece in. Now it might not be the right way to do it but it's the way I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, I can't think of a better way of doing it and anyway cheers, welcome back. So I'm going to chase, because I've already pinned it on and everything else I'm just going to place that and trace it onto uh, another piece of card and then uh, cut that out. So here it goes. Okay, that's all traced on now. I'll start cutting. Okay, that's all cut out now. So I'm just going to split it up here and here and then put the three pieces on and put a joiner in where the, the gap is. Uh, get on with that. Well there are my three pieces and I've marked them A, A and uh, B, B so that I know um, that they should match up to the ones at the front. Well there's my first attempt at a curved bridge. There's the front and there's the back and I've just got to fill these put something over those so That'd be okay, because you won't see it. Well, to get the stonework, um, I've marked on with a pencil, and then I'm scoring with uh, this hook knife, and I'm hoping that that will emphasise the uh, the joints in the in the stone. So <laughs> it's all experimental. There's the uh, the bridge at the back in place. I haven't fixed it yet, but uh, and there's no track on it. But I'm going to make the the uh, forward um, bridge first, and then I'll fix them both at the same time. Now there's the base of the bridge, uh, the platform, if you like, um, and you can see the river is quite wide here, and it's not there's not a lot of arch so 
I think in re in reality, it's going to have to be a, a, a steel girder bridge across there. Um, and I don't want to put anything fancy high because, you know, like a suspension bridge, because that will hide too much from the back uh, the back scenery. So uh, it's going to be a simple um, RSJ bridge that has um, been rolled to a, a curve. So the first thing we have to do is mark on it where the abutments will be, will be there and there and then we can have an arch in let's say there like that so this would be an arch and this is the main uh, river crossing and with that in place now the two and a quarter inches would be good there and two and a quarter inches would be good there so we cut a, uh, two strips two and a quarter inches so I'll cut my two strips and the next thing I have to do is to mark on one of them where the things will go so I pull that in there as best I can and mark there and there and there and one round here so that's where the cutouts are going to have to be See if, if that's going to work out for the the, uh, the river. I'm just going to tap it on temporarily and offer it up. Uh, you can see it is going to work. So uh, I can carry on and do the other bit now. Now because I intend to have um, a canal running along here and a lock here I'm going to have to cut that section off so um, I better get that done now and there we have it both bridges done uh, just a bit of finishing off touches now well, that's as far as I've got for the moment um, the bridge, neither of the bridges are fixed yet um, but because I've got to extend this um, track way down down this side here and then the bridge will, oh, it's more or less in the right place uh, and I really have, or well, later on when I get round to doing the fine details in the river, one granddaughter will be on her paddleboard Another granddaughter and her partner will be down here in their kayaks and my third or my other granddaughter, the third one, with her two children, my great grandchildren, will be camping just here. And to get there, they'll be crossing on this bridge, um, which is a little footbridge that hangs like that. Or supports across there like that and this is the what holds it up and I built that how I made that in uh, nine, 1999 uh, for the, and I call it Millennium Bridge 
and it was on the layout when it was in the shed. So that's about it. This oh, this here will be the station for the Heritage Railway, and here will be a car park. So uh, yes, the ideas are coming there, and uh, soon, soon I'll be able to lay tracks. Now, once again, thank you very much indeed for watching, and uh, I hope you'll continue to watch my uh, pathetic progress. <laughs> but I'm enjoying it, and uh, there's a lot to do yet. Bye. Bye-bye for this time. <laughs>